r slash credit. What is the thing we don't talk about in your family? My brother who died. We never ever talk about him. It's so strange. Growing up I knew I had a brother and I knew he was hit and killed by a car walking home. But I don't know anything about him aside from that. I've seen his pictures. I know what he looked like. I don't know anything about his personality, his likes or his dislikes, the type of music he listened to. I once found his comics in my mum's closet when I was younger, but that was about it. It is almost like it's just a story and he wasn't a real person. It wasn't until my grandfather died about 11 years ago and my mother and I walked to his grave. She broke down into an inaudible mess, then it really hit me for the first time ever that he was a real person. As crazy as that sounds. I don't understand that pain of losing a child but it hurt to see my mom mourn like that, almost as if it had just happened. The only time since then he was ever mentioned was by my dad a few months ago. Out of my mother, father, and sisters I'm the tallest, my dad told me how the only one of us who was taller than me was Jimmy and how he always seemed to keep growing. How he probably would have towered over me. I almost cried. I wish I got to know him. Update. As someone had suggested in the comments I could check for archived information either by visiting a library to look for a news article and or obituary. I tried to search online for these things with no luck. I did however find archived yearbooks. I searched a couple before I found the school he went to. The first book was for backquote 86 and on my phone I couldn't find backquote 87 the year he died. Once I got to a computer I was able to find it. After the sophomore class page there was a nice memoriam for him. Also I had his age wrong as I realized reading his memoriam I had taken the year he was born and the year he died and came up with 16 when in fact he died before his birthday that year making him only 15. It was nice to read kind words about him and his apparent love for music. I've linked it below with his last name blurred and his picture cropped out. The name at the bottom is not his last name. I'm assuming it's the person who wrote it. Since seeing this, I now feel the need to know what happened. Before I had felt sad about it and decided I'd just never know. After this it has in a way lit the fire to find out anything and everything I can. I'm nervous to ask family, but I just may. I will be doing what I can to find out anything on my own first. <laughs> that my parents died from AIDS in the early 90s when I was 2. Growing up I never knew how my mother died and I was told my father just disappeared. I remember throwing a tantrum in middle school for wanting to know what really happened to my parents. My aunt finally told me the truth. Well more yelled at me about it. I remember crying alone in my room for hours. I'm pretty sure their death was the starting point for how strange my family is. And how my family hasn't mentioned it since then. And I'm now 27. As far as I know we've never said the words HIV or AIDS aloud in my family. If it must be talked about it's that disease or something similar. My friends constantly wonder why I never mention my parents. And I still have hang ups telling people why slash how they passed away. It makes me feel so conflicted inside because I know I should have nothing to feel ashamed of, but my family and society makes me feel my parents' deaths should be swept under the rug. Edit. I want to make it clear we do talk about my mother. She isn't forgotten. Just her death and the exact cause is something that is avoided at all costs. I was always told by my family that my biological grandfather on mom's side died in a rock climbing accident right before mom was born. I found out last year that what actually happened was, while he was still attending a military college in the south in the 60s, my grandmother discovered that he liked to wear women's clothing after finding a box of dresses in his size in his closest. The next day, she came back to find him hanging from the ceiling and she and two of her brothers had to smuggle his body out of the room and convince a coroner to rule it an accident. I'm honestly not even sure of who all in the family knows the truth, but anyone who does sure as hell doesn't talk about it. Edit. I really didn't expect this to blow up as much as it did. I want to thank everyone in their comments for their kind words and to clarify a few things. 
just for privacy sake I'm not going to say what college this took place at, I feel a little guilty as is putting such a personal family story out on the internet without giving more identifying info on top of it. To clarify, my grandmother found the dresses in his closet on campus, left out of shock slash confusion, and then came back to his room on campus to find him dead. It didn't happen in their shared house, or at her place, I apologize for the confusing wording. In that time and place, and in the military as well as my religious conservative family specifically, suicide was beyond stigmatized, and any investigation into why my grandfather killed himself would more than likely uncovered his secret and tarnished his memory in the community's eyes, hence the cover-up. My mother was the one that told me this story, so I haven't heard it from the three people who were actually there and probably never will. One of her brothers died before I was born and my grandmother is suffering from a degenerative mental illness that has completely destroyed her memory. Okay, to break the chain of secret girlfriends and estranged relatives, my family does not talk about cottage cheese. I can tell you want to hear more about this. For that we must start at the beginning. My father is a lover of all things dairy. He would drink so much milk as a child his mother would tell him you either have to become a dairy farmer or marry a farmer's daughter. And dear dad did just that when he and my mom tied the knot. Dad also loves cheese, solid cheese, soft cheese, and cottage cheese. Dad is however very squeamish. He cannot stand the sight or thought of blood, body fluids, or cheese curds. This makes enjoying his cottage cheese, by the quart, difficult. No one is allowed to talk about cheese, curds, whey, or how it is all made when he is enjoying his snack. If you make the mistake of mentioning any of these things dad ends the conversations by throwing his hands in the air and yelling we don't talk about that. My mother's mental and physical abuse of both me and my sister during our childhoods. Can't talk about it with her because the conversation never goes anywhere. Same shit every time I try to bring it up to get the smallest bit of closure that never happened. Turns to well, if it happened it didn't happen like that to well, if it happened like that then you provoked me and it's all your fault. On a certain level she believes she genuinely was not abusive, because what she did to me was much more mild than the even more abusive upbringing she had herself, and she thinks the fact that she did better means she did good. Can't talk about it with my sister, because she's much older than I am, and got the fuck out of the house the second she could, not that I blame her, and wrote off the entire family, not only my mom but also me and everyone else, and I've never had any relationship with her, and have been rebuffed when I've tried to reach out. Can't talk about it with extended family, because my mother never did anything in front of them, and I'm a perpetual fuck up, so I have zero credibility. Tried talking to an aunt I used to be close to about it once, and she scolded me for making up stories, and immediately told my mother what I had said. I knew that, if she didn't believe me none of the rest of them would, and never tried again. My dad never talks about his sister. She stole thousands from her father, fled to New Mexico, and is now hosting my great uncle, and waiting for him to die, so she can claim his belongings. I don't know if he's actually going to will anything to her, but she seems certain. I haven't seen my aunt in over a decade, but she's a real piece of work. My mom complains about it a lot, but the rest of her family doesn't really like to admit that they don't talk to her much. There was some big drama years ago where they fought over mom's parenting. This was largely because of me, and since then my mom's sister and parents rarely speak to her. My family also refuses to talk about or acknowledge my parents' disciplinary methods, which involve taking one of us unruly children throwing us in a tub of cold water and dunking our heads under it repeatedly while yelling at us. They did this for years any time one of us got seriously out of line. They also once force fed my sister mustard because she hates it. Maybe you can see why my relatives disagreed with mom's parenting. When I was about 5 years old, my mom, grandma, brother and I were about an hour from home and we stopped to get gas. We went inside to pay, but we were 13 cents short. My mom told the clerk be right back, I'll go get it from the car. 
So we all go back to the car, and my mom hands me 13 cents, and asks me to go pay the clerk. I go inside, and by now a line has formed. I waited in line, not realizing that I probably would've been fine to just go up to the front to just hand him the money. When I finally finished, I walk outside, and I could see our mini even driving away. My family was nowhere to be found. They'd left without me, in an unfamiliar neighborhood, 50 miles from home. I got scared, but I can remember feeling like, surely this isn't as abnormal as it feels. They'll be right back, right? So I began to cry, and I walked over and sat on a concrete slab next to the gas station. I'm not sure how long it was, but at least several minutes later I finally saw the van returning. When they pulled up, my mom was bawling, and she began hugging and kissing me and apologizing. Apparently what happened was my brother, 7 yo, closed the heavy sliding door and my mom, hearing that sound, assumed it was after I'd crawled back in, so she started to drive away. After all, how long could it take me to deliver 13 cents? The story definitely makes my mother look pretty bad, but because I was so young when it happened, and it was so out of character for her, I was never really mad at her. So for the next 15 years or so, we'd tell people that story and kinda laugh about it. My mom would laugh too. Turns out, her laughter was forced. It tore her up inside any time we talked about it. She finally confessed to us how it made her feel, and we all just sorta of agreed to never bring it up again. We weren't mad at her. We'd totally forgiven her for her mistake, and made sure she knew that, but she was never able to forgive herself. She's still around, and is an amazing mother, we just never tell that story anymore. My grandparents try to look like a perfect picture. Reality is my mom's never met her real dad. My step-grandfather who we have never acknowledged aloud is not her father was a shit drunk who has been on pain pills since he quit drinking. Pain pills my grandmother steals and eats. My uncle married a girl after getting her preggers at 15. Turned out her sister was really her mother in a religious scandal. Other uncle has been on a gambling binge for 30 years. My mum died after getting addicted to the same opiates the family loves and having an aneurysm. I once caught my grandfather masturbating to Baywatch. All those things, never a fucking word. Edit clearing the air here. I'm a female from a family of upper middle class, one side Native American mostly, one side Jewish. My family keeps a great image, have held great jobs slash careers, and do not talk about their problems in the open. So no, it's not really as big of a mess as some assume. More like a rabid pack of dogs behind closed doors and closed curtains. My aunt discovered her sister was actually her mother when some genetic testing was happening for separate issues. She grew up thinking her grandmother was her mother and her mother her sister. Jehovah's Witness. I have no ability to respond to all these questions. I'm kind of a hermit and have never had so much response. Thank you for peeping my skeletons. Mental health. My dad suffers severely from depression and often will try to self-medicate with alcohol. He's not an alcoholic by any means, but he is drinking for the wrong reasons and it isn't very healthy. I struggle with depression, being suicidal, loneliness, anxiety disorder my brain is fucked up. But I didn't know about my dad's issues until I was an adult. I had been struggling with these feelings since I was a kid and didn't want to say anything because I felt it would make me seem weak or messed up. I remember being around 13 and I posted a Facebook status saying Rachel Lee and 17 is mad at the world but doesn't know why when people started getting in touch with my mom asking if something happened to me she got angry and told me to take down the status. That was it. No conversation about how I was feeling, no info about why I was feeling that way. It really messed me up, so I want to make sure that in my future home, mental health is acknowledged and taken care of just like physical health. My dad bought a Christmas ornament in the back quote 70s a little man made out of a black pipe cleaner with a bit of decoration. It was maybe a quarter of an inch long and you could barely see it on the tree. It wasn't even supposed to be an ornament, really. Just a tiny pipe cleaner man, whose arms could be wrapped around a thin branch. 
My dad called this ornament Zulu man and he fucking loved that thing. My whole childhood, every year when we unpacked the box of ornaments, my dad would joke slash not a joke grow more and more agitated, frequently declaring, if Zulu man isn't there, Christmas is cancelled, until Zulu man was finally found. Throughout the season, my sister and I would periodically inspect the tree and feign horror, asking dad if he'd moved Zulu man for some reason, and we'd hyperventilate with laughter while he ran to the tree to double check it was only a prank. Christmas was cancelled and subsequently reinstated a lot in our house. One year, when I came back from college, we unpacked the ornament box and Zulu man wasn't in his usual twist of tissue paper. My dad must have cancelled Christmas three dozen times while we unpacked the box and my sister and I were in fits of giggles until we reached the bottom of the box and he was still nowhere to be found. None of us said anything about it, even then. But the look on my dad's face broke my fucking heart. I'll remember it as long as I remember my own name. I brought up Zulu man once, some 10 years later, and my mom and sister immediately shushed me. That's the last time I've said his name. But I still nurse this wild hope every time I open an old box of books from my childhood home or dig up a purse from college that I'll find Zulu man clinging inside, staring up at me waiting to hug his next tree branch and heal my father's heart. <laughs> my mother-in-law is enormously, grotesquely fat, 300 plus plus LBS, and is a burden to her children. She is literally the elephant in the room. For someone not yet senile, she is the most mentally and physically helpless person I have ever met. Fortunately she can afford a first class assisted living place. But one son has to manage all her finances and do her taxes, while her other son handles all her medical issues, prescriptions, and doctor visits. Neither son is compensated. She could easily afford a taxi, but doesn't want to pay for one always expecting us to endure the hours long commutes on congested freeways to visit. Meeting mom for lunch takes most of a day. Then when we come, she requests we do her sundress shopping, heavy on diet soda, mini brandies and champagne four packs. She uses a cane, but declines to walk by herself, insisting on holding on to your arm as you wolkververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververververver
It is for that reason at least that our family has the gun at watch that the men passed down, the family rings and a few other pieces. All the rest would be taken by Peter. So we don't talk about Peter. And I think if my grandfather ever saw him again he would kill him saying fuck the consequences. Peter didn't show up to the funeral for a reason. My mom has six brothers six uncles. However, there's a seventh uncle and he's older than my mom. He exists because of the way our language works. Okay, so in my language, the first sibling or the oldest is called by the number two and then three and so on. My uncles call my mom by the number three. So there has to be a number to write. Exactly. My cousins have talked about him, but when we look in the photos, nothing. No signs of him. I asked my mom about it before, and she nonchalantly says that she doesn't know what I'm talking about. One of my uncles have stated that they wanted to use Google to find him. He doesn't know how the internet works, and all of his siblings shrugged it off like it was nothing. So yay, I have a 7th uncle, yet I don't know who he is, or what he even looks like, and my family refuses to acknowledge him. Edit, I would like to clarify that the uncle who'd asked to search him on Google did in fact knew him personally. So no, it wasn't stillbirth. Edit 2, just found out from the Google uncle. He's either lost or dead. How you might ask. Some time ago, he took a boat to go to America illegally. No I'm not kidding. This is straight out of the plot of the foreigner starring Jackie Chan. His boat either sank or sent him somewhere not America and hence why he's missing. As for photos, the Google uncle said that my mom and her mom kept it in a separate book apart from everyone else's. Weird how they share this information now. What still bothers me is this. When someone die, our culture creates a small shrine for them in our house. There's no shrine of his in ours, or in any of my family's houses. My brother's few years of living the gay life. My entire family is way way open minded, and pretty much live by the motto, not my life, don't give a fuck about a person's personal choices. You get your happiness, and get it good and often, you know? My parents would have my brother and his partner over very often for dinners and events and even my grandmother who was born at the beginning of the century adored the boyfriend. He was a good guy in every aspect and pretty much seemed like one of our clan while he was around. But then my brother just changed again. He broke up with the man and went straight. Not be or even flirtatious about other men. Just flat out straight. From pride parade to measuring ruler straight. He has gone through two wives and has five children and one grandchild. It is like those four years of he and that guy never happened. No mention of the guy's name, no family photos or videos with them together, and for the life of me, I'm fairly sure his children don't have a clue about it. We aren't embarrassed by it, we weren't then, and we aren't now. He isn't the type of brother who lives in shame either. So, like, what the fuck gives? At times I catch myself blinking, wondering if I had imagined it all. Maybe once in a blue moon my mother and I, and only us will ever speak of it, and we shake our heads and chuckle. That did happen right mom? I, I think it did. I seem to have gifts from him still. And then that conversation is done, and isn't brought up again for a couple years. What makes it even more confusing is that our most loved cousin is gay. A recently passed uncle was down low B and my niece is unabashedly lesbian who seems dead set on scoring an entire pokedex of girlfriends. And the family is cool and dandy about it, but apparently my brother was never gay or something. Hell, help me understand that shit. My older sister dropping out of school to have a baby. You can't bring it up without suddenly amending. But she's so smart and such a hard worker now. She still treated the other family members like shit and supported her husband's KKK activities. My other older sister being a hardcore drug addict and thug. You can't bring it up without suddenly amending well she turned herself around and loves God now. She's still a sociopath who treats everyone like resources to be consumed and thrown away. My mother's decades of alcohol and child abuse. If you bring it up she'll get drunk and abuse you too. She'll go through the whole narcissist's prayer in denying any of that happened before turning it around and making it everyone else's fault but her own. 
but it's okay to talk about how I'm a failure and how meaningless my fake illness is or to point at me and make fun of me. I really don't like my kid. I fell for the usual women like babies stuff. I work with kids and enjoy seeing them learn and grow. But the 24 over 7 aspects of parenthood wear me down and I've never felt it to be rewarding. At all. Ever. Every minute with my own child is either dull or grating. And the more personality he develops the less I like him. It never hurt him. I provide for him. My partner took over as a primary care driver so that I can save energy and do my best to be affectionate and friendly when I'm with the kid. But heaven help me if I so much as suggest being tired of parenting, much less acknowledge I generally hate my kid and wish myself dead if I spent along with him. Even my partner can touch on it. Doctors blame my depression. Cause my meds apparently fix all my symptoms except for the not liking your kid bit. Friends still believe I'll snap out of it and want more kids again in a few years. Anyone else sees me as either still depressed or a monster. The idea that you can misjudge how much you enjoy the company of children, that there are people in this world who regret having kids, that we don't all have a magical bond with our flesh and blood, is apparently beyond even those I thought were close to me. It's just total taboo now. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.